Your name? Takuro. Your password? One, two, three, four, five. No. Quarty? No. How about admin? No. What's up, guys? What's happening? Do you know this guy? Sure. He's Takuo. He visits me every day. Do you need the ID? Thanks. Can I get in now? Yeah, go ahead. All right. See you tomorrow. We all know that passwords can be a pain. Every website asks for one, users have a ton of them they can't remember, or even worse, some users have one or two passwords reused across various websites and apps, which could be a big security risk. This is not fun for users or developers. My name is Eiji, and there's a handy and simple solution to this issue called federated login. Federated login means that user authenticates using a third-party identity, usually without re-entering credentials or profile information. Google Sign In is Google's take on federated login and is designed to be as easy as possible for you to implement and for users to sign in. Let's see how it works. Here's a sign in button. When the user taps on it, a sign in window appears. The user chooses an account and then signs in if he is not signed in already. The user allows access to profile information. Now the pop-up window closes and the user is signed in. Notice that the current best practice for asking permissions is incremental authorization. This means that rather than signing in and requesting user permissions at the same time, you should first sign your user in and request for permissions only when they are needed. Check out my authorization video for further details on this. Now let's take a look at how to implement Google Sign In in just a few steps. First, head over to Google Developers Console, create a project, add a credential, configure a consent screen, and create a client ID. In HTML, add the client ID to the head section using meta tag. Then load API.js. This is the core of Google JavaScript library. When API.js is loaded, call gapi load to import auth 2 module to enable Google sign-in. Then call gapi auth 2 init to initialize. Once these are done, you are ready. The next step is to render a sign-in button. The most generic option to do this is to use a custom button. Put an HTML tag and use regular CSS to design the button. Don't forget to read our guidelines for designing the button. You also find the button assets in the same doc. Add an event listener and invoke sign in when the button is pressed. The sign in function returns a Google user object. Use it to get basic profile information such as username, email, and the profile image. Finally, users can sign out simply by calling sign out. Review our sample code here for a more detailed workthrough. OK, this was the basis of authentication using Google Sign In. But what do you do if there's a server involved? Or how would you access the Google APIs on behalf of the user? I will talk about these workflows in the following videos in this series. Thank you for stopping by and stay tuned.